So I guess I just want to know where you're at right now. In terms of not like physically where you're at, like like literally. I'm I'm just saying like mentally, like where you are. You mentally. Know, like well, to give some perspective to anyone that's listening, we, you just did your collab with the Bucks. Yeah, yeah. So where does that like sit you? Because I know there's a much more you're you're doing, but that's kind of one of the bigger highlights as far as I would imagine in life for you right now. Yeah, yeah. So that the buck collaboration is definitely is it's definitely like a, a I guess in terms of like stepping stone, so a really big step for us as a brand. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just checking like the other day, and like the amount of press we got uh, from that project yeah. in itself was pretty insane. Uh, everything from like NBA.com to Telemundo to like Telemundo, all the, yeah, all these news channels. Mm. So it's really it's really cool to see. Uh, our name uh, plastered next to the Bucks, and I think I think it was a really uh, I, I feel blessed to be able to, to be part of like the initial launch. So, as you you know, like the Bucks and Six is now a lifestyle brand. So, yeah, they ended up choosing us to to be part of like the first official launch. So, not only was the press for the collaboration, but the press was also to kind of just push that like the Bucks is launching their own brand as well. Did you guys like cut Brandon Jennings a check for that at all? I, I don't know. I had no I idea. Funny. Like, that's that's on the, I thought you the might Bucks have laughed at that. <laughs> Only certain people get the reference. Um no but I guess outside of that too just just seeing how far that you've come just me, me you and I personally like we've met just a couple times and I feel like it's always been in a uh, manner of possibly working together or just kind of a general understanding of what each other does mm -hmm. um where are you at as far as like in the world right now like where's your mindset at you know where do you go from here um man i mean i'm, I'm just dreaming bigger to be honest uh and and more focus on the brand that i've, I've built so far um mm. it's it's been nice you know I, I i learned a lot throughout the process of like collaboration and just seeing you know what that looks like working with a kind of like a well-established brand you know at that point i mean the bucks is i, I see them as like a corporate company because mm -hmm. they have so much like different levels uh so it's it's really interesting to see that but now i'm like more so just like like taking a step back and like really honing in more on you know the vision of like my brand and and really focusing on that like my, my whole goal is to try to like really establish a strong identity and not only in terms of like graphics or colors or anything like that but i'm, I'm trying to like focus more on like silhouettes uh really cool cuts uh things that are like will be uniquely identified to to us currently i don't i don't think we have any so that's like that's my big focus for this year yeah, I mean, one thing I noticed about your brand is a, it is, is a lot of, it's really graphic based, you know, yeah. it's very, and they're always um, next level designs, like they always have, you always have like the coolest graphic shirts. You know, I think one of the interesting things about you, uh, at least to myself, is just like the vision you have in the production you, you, you move, you know, as a production person, like when I see you roll out a new shirt or, mm -hmm. or or do a campaign for your brand you always make sure the production is done very well which a lot of people don't really have a grasp on that when they're in that design world they usually have people around them that kind of handle that area yeah so uh, like does that just come from you being in film kind of prior you know beforehand yeah. before that um yeah I, I think so looking back i'm able to like connect a lot of dots now mm -hmm. um so there was a period in my, I guess, creative, you know, journey where I was obsessively doing photography, like for five years straight, and then that transitioned into video. Um, and at the time, it was just, just really an obsession, a, a passion that that I just loved being a part of in the community. At the time, like 2015, 2016, like Instagram was like really popping, and I could. I went to, I got to travel all over America just because of like photography, you know, I got to go to New York for the first time. And that was just to go out there and like shoot and link up with a lot of the homies that I follow on Instagram. Same thing to Chicago, Detroit, uh, LA, all these different places. And 
when when I think back to it, I think being able to like focus on visual storytelling has really helped shape kind of like I guess my trajectory as a, a creative director for the brand. I think uh, storytelling is a really important com- component to be able to communicate an idea or a vision, and that's something that more than anything, I feel like I really beyond like creating product, I think the storytelling element of the brand is like one of the most like essential things that I focus on day to day. So anytime we have a new project, the first thing I think about is like, how are we communicating this to like our audience? Like what stories are we trying to tell and who could I work with to, to bring those visions to life? So yeah, looking back now, I'm like, I'm so glad that I was, I picked up a camera and mm. it's not helping me a lot throughout this whole process. You know, I know a lot of your story is shared throughout like Unfinished Legacy, mm-hmm. you know, especially when you're doing press uh, and just kind of introducing yourself to to different crowds or, you know, new follow new followers, um, you know, but I, I feel like there's a story of you as an individual, you know, beyond, you know, just that general like, so how did everything begin? You know, where did you come from yeah. before you traveled here? Like really what was life kind of like, like, like in depth before you got to America? America, yeah. Like outside of just having that dream of coming to America, like what were those moments that you just like woke up and your, your, what was your mind now? Was it in that creative world yet? Or did, did, did that kind of develop as you got here? Yeah, um, so I'll go back to kind of the beginning. So I was, mm-hmm. I was born in Sudan um, and my family migrated to Kenya at a refugee camp because- uh, How old were you when that I was, I was like five years old. So I don't, I don't really have much memories of Sudan, but I just remember there was a war going on at the time that a lot of families migrated to Kenya to seek refuge, not only from Sudan, but from Ethiopia, Somalia, all these like neighboring country with you know, moved to Kenya to seek refuge. So that's my early memory is just living in the refugee camp and not necessarily, you know, like the world is kind of like what I knew then. Uh, there, was, there was really no other ideas of like what the rest of the, the world looks like. So it was just all survival. So um, I remember early memories, like my parents were really adamant about like going to school and like focusing on studies and stuff like that, but I didn't really get it. And that wasn't really like good schooling at the refugee camp. Mm. But uh, I, I do remember like though my dad and my mom like started a business. So they were, you know, entrepreneurs at heart and they, they were able to like really establish this big business from just like selling household goods in the beginning, you know, stuff like salt, sugar, you know, this is like simple stuff. And then over time, it just like progressed into like this big you know, department where like, to the point where we got electricity. Uh, my dad was running a, a movie theater and would like stream soccer. And at that point, like that's unheard of, you know, like middle of like a refugee camp, there's no resources, but he was able to like bring in all these different things because he, uh, both my mom and dad uh, focused on like establishing the business, saving, uh, and then like navigating how to like bring resources back. So early memories, uh, with also going to school, like I remember some of the earlier things that I would do was like tracing a lot of the images from like the textbooks. Uh, mm. I wasn't really paying too much attention <laughs> in class. I was just, I would just Felt. trace images and stuff like that. Yeah. So, and outside, outside of school, I played a lot of soccer. So we were always outdoors, uh, always playing soccer. What was and, school like? Not to interrupt. Like, what was the the, the schooling like? I know it wasn't the traditional. It, like, you yeah, just pull it up. It wasn't like it was more so just like anyone in the community that that felt like they had knowledge or had some sort of like education would like volunteer to be a teacher because mm-hmm. like that's something you know as as a community you learning is always like encouraged. So and and a lot of people uh, knew that that was something in order to like kind of break those cycles, uh, we need the kids to like kind of be educated a little bit to, and to just kind of have like that hope for like a brighter future. Uh, even though there was no really like resources there at all. And I remember even now, like I, when I look back, I think of 
early innovation, like for us as kids, like, you know, we didn't have soccer balls. So we would walk around, collect a bunch of plastic bags and then uh, make them into like balls. And like, we got really good at, at doing that to the point where like sometime like they would even bounce. And, and that was like sometimes. our soccer, <laughs> like, you know, like that's how we played soccer. You know, we had yeah. to collect bags and, and really like innovate. And now that I'm thinking about it, like I'm, I'm, I'm a person that's, I, I don't, I don't care if like there's any resources around me and if there's, there's not like, I'll figure out a way to, 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 to be resourceful and, and to just make my ideas come to life. So I, I always reflect back to like my early memories of that experience. Yeah, I mean, I think I think stuff like that is so special because like to me, like knowing you, following your career, like the most interesting part about you in my eyes is not your journey from Milwaukee to LA, your journey from, you know, uh, being a photographer to designer or company owner. It's, it's, it's the fact that you came to, you know, you came from a space where just like, everything was pointing in a direction where like your, your mind's not on like designing the, a cool shirt to wear. Your, your mind's not on like how to, um, how to, how to fit in in a space where you don't have to worry about being, you know, like having the necessities, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's just really like the most impressive thing for me because it's like, I feel like that really gives people um, depth when they're trying to be storytellers. And that's why I feel like, you know, like me as a filmmaker is, you know, I certainly haven't come from uh, an entirely different, you know, country or uh, background like that in, in mm -hmm. a sense, you know, I, I've come from just like kind of, uh, you know, you know how the city is. I just lived in a. I was always the white kid in the group, and mm -hmm. you know, and and in places that you wouldn't picture. You know, America wouldn't paint white people to be around. You know, mm -hmm. it was a multicultural upbringing, and I feel like for me, as someone that's a storyteller, like that's where my perspective comes from, as far as like the type of fashion I put into things, or the type of. Uh, you know, understanding of storytelling that maybe people I work with are trying to translate to me to try to put on screen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's really important. So I think um, I, I really want to see more of that from you. Like, I want, I want you to touch that more as an individual, you know, not the brand, like this is aside from the brand. Like, yeah, yeah. I feel like that is so, such a story to yeah, yeah. share with no, many people. Definitely, definitely. And, and I think, I think it's time, passes on to there's I'm going to pull a lot of things from just like my upbringing and from like my background uh right now it's just kind of I'm I'm at a stage where like I'm there like my time is super occupied you mm -hmm. know and running you know running a company it's probably like the, yeah. one of the hardest thing to do like you have <laughs> employees you got you know people that you're responsible for so break that really, down too you know like break down like you know, let's let's get it out of the dark questions. You know, <laughs> break, right breaking down like uh, running a company. Yeah, what's it what's it like? You know, just like running a business right now. I mean, I personally know just like what's that experience been for you? Because you've totally switched locations too. Like you've brought, <laughs> you've picked up and left and went to like a whole different place where like the world is like entirely different from here where yeah, it's yeah. like you're like a mechanic or you have a boring bank job you know yeah like i mean the, the, more, the, the more i'm thinking about it too like uh i i guess i haven't really realized how difficult that was to, mm. to just relocate a whole company to a new location where you like have no connections or anything like that um I've only been like thinking about it because like we're in the, the process of like moving some of our stuff back to Milwaukee mm -hmm. and that shit is difficult. <laughs> like, yeah. Very difficult. Like renting a U-Haul is costing like five, close to five grand and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not spending that much on, on, you know, I mean, just to like transport things. U-Haul is just like an awful experience. It's, in it's Yeah, it's crazy. But like, I mean, thinking back to like when, when we decided to move to LA, I feel like we had no choice. We had like outgrown Milwaukee. And to me, like one thing hmm. that I'm really like thoughtful about is if you're not, if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. So we hit that ceiling and I was like, okay, if we don't, 
if we can keep growing here because we don't have resources. And like, to me, I see resources. I always like reference it back to like trees, like they need nutrients to keep growing. And that's, mm -hmm. to me, like that's resource. Uh, so I, I went out to LA for about a week, just kind of toured a lot of like factories and stuff like that. I'm like, oh man, this is like the place to be. Like just the air feels different. <laughs> like as soon as you step off the plane, you just, you feel like you're in a different world. It, it is a very, you know, very busy place, like very chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, it, in a way, like, I think moving out there, like we, we moved out there with like clear goals. So we were really focused. Uh, we didn't really get too distracted by the LA lifestyle. Um, I literally lived across my studio space. So I just, every morning I would just walk over and then I would just walk over to like my apartment and like Definitely sleep. Definitely convenient That's for literally sure. Like, that was literally my life for like the past two years. Um, it's been that long already, huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. It feels like you just moved there. It, like, it, it, it does, it, it does. It really feels like um, you just moved there and uh, just seeing, just seeing that like, uh, you operating out there, you know, what were, what were some things like when you went, when you went there that you just like, you thought would be different. Cause you know, I know for me, like when I go out to LA, like yeah. now that I've been going there, like for a couple of years now, just kind of consistently to work, I know what I'm walking into. So like, there's things you do when you first get there that you're like, you just have to learn the hard way. <laughs> like it could be anything from like, how you get your rental car to like, oh, uh, what hotels to go with, Man, or, you know, I, I like. Think, I think just like expenses, bro. I, I didn't yeah. know how expensive, L you literally have to, every living moment, like you, you're yeah, paying to yeah. exist there. Cause I remember, you know, parking, like, <sighs> dude, God, it's like, <sighs> yeah. Between me How many and, tickets you get? I haven't, luckily I haven't got a ticket. Cause I, wow. we, we had like, there's a parking lot Mm -hmm. right across the apartment right next to the studio so i like befriended the guy so we're cool now and he's just like he just doesn't give homie. you tickets i mean i pay monthly so it's like you know the, and then like there's months when when i don't pay like he just knows that i'm you know i'm i'm a guy of my word so i'll, I'll always make sure to like make those payments but relationships very important it makes mm -hmm. it either make it will make the experience of living out in a new city like a great thing or like a terrible thing but I, I was very fortunate to meet a lot of like great individuals like within literally like within the first like two months of just being out there um i guess having like a strong social presence too like a lot of i didn't realize how many people like were mutual just friends through like social media so like yeah. once i touched down and like people were kind of like watching that journey of like oh like okay today we're packing the next day we're hitting the road and we're on the road for like three days and then we finally got to LA. So like, uh, as soon as we touched down, I got a lot of messages from like homies that wanted to like link up or grab coffee and just like, um, yeah, the coffee is and stuff the, like that. Mm -hmm. the co yeah, actually I've never had a full cup of coffee in my life. So, <laughs> that's so, crazy. yeah, that's I mean, crazy. I, I feel like it's dirt water, but, um, <laughs> Like it's just boiled dirt. Like that's what I oh, feel man. like. I that's the vibes many, I get from. How many people are you pissing off by saying that? So. <laughs> I've pissed off enough already. So, um, no, I mean that's that's kind of what's expected when you when you go out to a city like that. You know what I what I uh, was discussing with you kind of before we started filming was just like, you know, you, you kind of mentioned that you were kind of trying to move some part of the business back, and that's more on the production end here just kind of to get a more spacious feel because you're gonna have to like be fulfilling products and orders is that more of what it's on and then you're kind of just gonna be there to kind of push the brand forward and do more brand work uh, yeah so a bit of a bit of that so we're still like you know la is like probably like in terms of like production manufacturing like that's the place to be like mm. you have like Everything that gets showcased in like New York Fashion Week is made in LA. Oh so, yeah. So it's 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 cool having access to like factories and, and stuff like that. Any idea you think about, like you could literally, as long as you have money, like you could get it done next door. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to be in like the fashion district. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of great connections there. But in terms of like moving back, my dream has always been to like fully like sustain almost like vertically integrate the brand so uh the goal is to slowly 
work on like building a production facility. So like, you know, starting with just small, like six color press screen printing, and then hopefully down the line will scale to something more automated. So like an automatic screen printing press, but beyond, beyond the production side of things, um, I think we also are looking at this retail front right on water street. So I think that in itself will open up a lot of doors and I feel like I could contribute a little bit more to the city of Milwaukee than I mm. can in LA. In what um, ways? Just in terms of like, I think being a tastemaker, um, I think my thing is I'll be traveling more often. So like pulling a lot of references or like bringing things back to Milwaukee and like introducing it to like the creatives here. Cause a lot of people don't really get to get out. Yeah. So it'd be cool. My goal is as, as I, as the brand keeps growing, as I keep growing my name and the more I establish strong networks, it's like, how could I bridge, how could I become that bridge between like an uh, industrial place like LA to like a place like Milwaukee that doesn't have much opportunities. So I want to like be that bridge between uh, a reason for like a creative here to like connect with somebody out there and like find like some sort of like collaborative project and what whatnot. You know, I really wanted to meet with you today to kind of talk about you and I, but I just feel like you're just like way more interesting than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't have that interesting, like, like just being in film, it's so, it's, it's, it's so like, I don't know. I, I've kind of turned into a person like, I spend so much time either away from people or around them too much. And, and it's like, when I'm away, I'm, you know, just putting new ideas together mm -hmm. and just trying to get uh, a vision of where I want to take things. And then it, when I'm around people, it's just, it's just an execution thing, like you know? Working, yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, it, it feels like for you that, that that's, uh, you're just, you just have to be around people a lot. Like, is that how, is that, well, I know, I know uh, like that you're in there and you're just like mainly like putting designs together, like you have that time, but like, it feels like even just like internally with your company, like for me, I don't have to go and work with, you know, people who I have as crew or, you know, yeah, there's yeah. different times for that until, until we're either filming, pre-production, post-production, yeah. like they're, they're different times. It seems, it seems like they're, you have to keep people around you that, keep that kind of like that flow going as yeah, far as i mean the thing i feel like the the differences between like you know production versus like the, the brand side of things like running a brand it's like they're like some things that just happen daily no matter if mm -hmm. you're there or not like orders have to be shipped out mm -hmm. so that's that's a daily thing our website's up you know all the time and orders coming in so we need somebody in-house that's going to be shipping every day so Are you and Sorry, I just had this question. Um, are you the primary like designer? Like, are there, is there anyone on your team that puts other designs together, or do you just kind of like I, I, I oversee? That? I put all the concepts together, mm -hmm. and I I just work with a few graphic designers. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I, and I'm always looking to expand that that team because in in order mm -hmm. to to fully like execute like the vision I have for Unfinished Legacy, I need a broader uh, broader talent in terms of like not only like graphic design, but also like um, visual in, in terms of like, I do a lot of the lookbook shoots, but like, as I think as time progresses, I'll, I'll get more busy. And that's something that I'll, I'll probably slowly start like pushing off to like somebody else. Um, we have someone in house that does video. So not only are we running like an e-com brand, but we're also like s somewhat of a social media content uh yeah company in a way because we we run a youtube channel that's just very helpful surpass like 100k subscribers and that that in itself it's 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 a whole business you know well i mean my buddy my buddy uh jack i don't know where he's at it's dark in here but uh we like i went through a phase where i was like i just want to make t-shirts for myself yeah, to wear yeah, that yeah. I'm not gonna sell to anybody. Uh -huh. So I just like, I move on impulse. So I buy like, you know, heat presses, yep. the silk screen <laughs> machines. And like, I just like, we'll put them in my spare room. And like he had came over to my house and we had had your videos up on YouTube, just of you explaining how to like 
to press out shirt. shirts and yeah. shit. And I just like failed every attempt that I did at it. But it just, it, when you mentioned uh, the YouTube channel, it just kind of brought me back to that because we tried so many times to do that in my spare room. Yeah. It was kind of funny. It's been, and I mean, the, yeah, the YouTube channel has been earlier on too. Like, I, I mean, I, I brought somebody on right away and I was like paying them to like shoot these videos, even when yeah. I didn't have money. It was like, okay, like. When do we ever have money? Yeah, I exactly. Mean, money it's just comes and goes. Everything gets gets invested yeah. back. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest thing I had to learn too, is it's like, okay, like you might have like, a lot of money coming yeah. in, but it's also exiting out because you're putting cash it flow on a lot of like different projects and stuff like that. But I was very adamant on like documenting our journey and also being able to like help others, you know, because my whole thing with with the brand is if, if I could inspire, like help somebody along their journey. Um, and and so far, based on like the comments that we've been receiving throughout our, our YouTube you know, mm -hmm. videos, seems like a lot of a lot of kids are learning how to screen print through our, our channel. And that's something that I want to continue. Also, the, the other reason of coming back to the Milwaukee too, I feel like I want to really like teach a lot of kids, you know, just younger, could even be like first graders, like fifth graders, like come into our space. Let's like make some teas, mm. find some sponsors for the free teas, and then they get to keep it. And that's hopefully that sparks some sort of like inspiration to pursue like arts. Cause that's something I feel like even like within like the school districts now, like art is always getting cutbacks in terms yeah. of like funding and and without me going through all these internships, I don't think I'd be where I, I'm at. Um, and that took a few people who were ahead of me to like believe in me and to like instill these different ideas. It's like, oh yeah, you can screen print like this. This is a cool outlet. And from there, like screen printing has been like a big part of like my creative process to this day um and my my goals for us to, to you know establish not only like build equipments down the line or, but i want to i feel like there's an opportunity to to like build something within that industry that because we're already like on the forefront of it you type in screen printing on youtube like my face probably yeah, yeah, it does. So. It does. Uh, I know. Trust me. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, that you, you did mention, you know, just on a technological end that you want to get into like just uh, just producing, whether it's like equipment that mm -hmm. that is in that space. It sounds like you want to kind of eventually take either yourself or the brand into that technology world. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like that 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 could be a pro of being in California as well, like for you, because that's just like where the mecca of a lot of that is too. Like yeah, I feel like that would be something to take into account as well. Yeah, it is. It, it's very important just because, I mean, the, the industry is there, the connections, the network, everything. Mm -hmm. It's like the most kind of the most influential space. There's days where I'm like driving around downtown and I'm like, how the fuck is this place? This is it real? Yeah. Like, yeah. how is this like an iconic place that represents somewhat like America, but it's also like a shit show sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's like there's it's sometimes like the best of the best and then there's the worst of the worst. Just like in terms of like just atmosphere, smashed together. Yeah, everything, man. Yeah. It's just, it's not a good place to like live sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anyone say it was a great space, like in the last few years, for sure. Like to live, you know, um, I definitely, I definitely uh, want to know, like from you, like what, what would you say, like so far in your like professional life or adult life, like what's been probably like the lowest point for you as far as like, and how did you overcome that? Like what's been the lowest point for you know where you wanted to be at and you just couldn't get there oh man uh i mean obviously you got yeah, there yeah. The, i mean no no it's, it's crazy because you, you're saying lowest point i feel like i had my lowest point like maybe like two weeks ago yeah dude and and like tell me about it the, the highest point and then the lowest all at the same time bro like <laughs> it's it's crazy i guess uh, that's well, yeah with then. this with this bucks project it, i mean it was like one of the bigger one of the biggest projects with with taken on so far and mm -hmm. i think the other thing like I, I care too much with anything that i do I, I put too much care into it and and i feel like if you're not passionate about something like don't do it so like that's that's like my ethos in life 
Um, and, you know, there was like a few things that didn't end up working out like the way we expected it, like things coming in late mm. and stuff like that. So it's a lot of stress. Um, and I was also like moving back and forth between like LA and Milwaukee. So like the weather changes, like definitely like my body took a hit on it. Uh, so I was like really sick for like probably like four <clears throat> days. I felt like I was going to die. It was just terrible. Nyko, bro. Um, and then... Sorry, and then was... the whole like process of like trying to like transition to like that that in itself was like a lot of stress too. So um yeah, a lot a lot of like high and lows, but I think I think one thing that I'm really grateful for is having a team that believes in me and believes in like the the the, the vision and are always down with whatever it is that we want to do. Um and everybody at this point like we've all like sacrificed everything to like see the brand through. Mm. Um, and that's probably one of the most important things is just having people in your circle that like believe in you. Yeah. Probably even like more than you believe in yourself sometimes. Like that shit is really important. Um, that's an interesting take. But yeah. Yeah. I don't, so. yeah. For me, I, I think opposite. Like I feel like it is great to have people that believe in you, but I feel like at the end of the day, like if you want to achieve, like if you have like really high aspirations and you want to do something yeah, that hasn't yeah. been done, like you gotta be the one to hold yourself together. Yeah, of that. course, of course. Definitely. Like, I think, I think, I mean, having the self belief is very important. But yeah. like, I see that as in you. you know, everybody though, like we all have doubts. Oh yeah, I'm you know? like so severely like, depressed. So in, in those, that's why I'm in, in film. That's like, why in the, in those moments, you you need people around you that are gonna like when when you're doubting yourself, they they believe in you probably a little more than you do at that at that point. Now I'm not saying all the time. I mean, yeah, it's a saying, cute like, answer. Those, you know, yeah, I mean, those I get moments, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. Cool. Well, yeah, man. I mean, in terms of like, I guess also like with with your work, like navigating the the industry. What what has been like some of the like most difficult things? Because I know I know a lot of friends who you know are directors, producers, and it seems like a very like cutthroat industry. <laughs> well, well, what do you want to know about like bef before before it became real or when it is real now? Because there's I mean, two different I, answers I, I guess, for that. I guess both. Yeah, yeah. Well, before it came real, it was like convincing the people around me that I saw value in for, you know, like maybe I had a friend who was good at filming, you know, or good at editing. Sometimes like them, those people, they don't have the necessary, like they don't necessarily have the tunnel vision to, to, you know, make decisions based on value and mm -hmm. they make decisions that keep them in the same place. So like learning how to like use people in the right way and like give them the path to, you know, like if they have to choose whether they're gonna, you know, go down that path, but always giving them the option to, you know, follow you while you're, cause I'm gonna keep moving forward regardless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there was just a lot of people, you know, where we come from, you know, like, that there's a lot of people here that have dreams and that like start doing something, but they just, they don't have necessarily like that extra push behind them to, to keep it moving. So you just like, there's so many people coming and going. And, and that's why I really pinpointed on like getting yourself through it because it's like, um, there'd be people I'd be rolling with for a year and we'd be having a lot of great things going on. You know, I worked at a restaurant before, like while I was trying to put this together, like, like I was a full-time, you know, line cook. And on the weekends I would just, or, or nights and weekends, I would just be like trying to figure out like, what am I doing? What am I going to make this into? You know, I, I didn't know it was going to be film right away. I did so many other different things. So I think in the beginning was like figuring out like where is an area where I feel like I can grow in and take my, you know, take my talents to, to where they'll be appreciated. And, 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 and that was, that's my answer for the beginning. Now maneuvering is just like, <clears throat> it's just like, um, trying to maintain a business you know, cause when, when money starts to come in and like, it's, it's, it's not an issue to work with the biggest directors or work with the biggest companies. Like none of that's an issue. All, uh, the biggest issue right now is, is like, um, or biggest challenge, I would say, is just like maintaining something that like 
it, people are going to want to keep coming back to, Yeah, you know, or like whether it's on an artistic level or whether it's on a business level, like switching over from that business mindset to like then putting on an artistic hat um, is like the biggest challenge for me because I'm self-taught. I didn't go to film school. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the book of terminology. You know, I get a lot of shit sometimes because uh, I'll be on set like the lead director and there's a full crew and there's a you know famous person I'm shooting for and I don't know all of the lens, you know, yeah, yeah. sizes like the, that the, I the need the to know. I need things. to know that, you know, so yeah, I think yeah. uh, it's just kind of like being able to take the time to teach myself and know the, you know, where I do bring value, but where I do need to improve myself. Gotcha. You know, I, I feel like I'm a great businessman in a sense um, with, with a great vision, of course. Um, but it's just been getting through like maintaining the business and also trying to develop as an artist, like as a director, yeah. like learning the technical end of things. Like that's really where I've had to develop the most. I feel, I feel like that's kind of one of the hardest things within a, a artist journey is mm -hmm. when you're, you're trying to balance the business side, but also keep growing your artistic side because that's kind of a, a position that I'm in right now. There's days where I feel like, oh man, maybe I should go to school. Maybe like mm -hmm. if I went to school, I'll have <laughs> answers to these things. But it's uh, nine day. There's there's value there there's pros and cons of like of both because I have friends that are like they're good at what they do and they went to they went to college for for film and like they get out and now they have that fire under them to pay back the hundred thousand they owe for going to four years of film school. Mm -hmm. Now they they have access to a, a community of people who work in film, or they have access to, you know, um, you know, whether it's equipment or the the knowledge of like learning all of that, mm -hmm. but they have to become a businessman or a business yeah, lady. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And they have to know how to keep something rolling. Cause it's really just like about I'm not gonna say who you know, but like about what you're bringing a place. And in the yeah, beginning, you're yeah. gonna be bringing a lot more value than you're gonna be getting back. Yeah, you yeah. know. And I mean, you gotta prove yourself. And getting through that is like the toughest part for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I always when when creatives talk to me about school, I, I'm always pushing them like, yo, go to go for business, go for yeah. something that's that not necessarily like you as creatives like we're gonna always keep evolving and we're gonna always keep practicing our our you know skills and stuff but like the business side that that comes that shit comes from nowhere some, sometimes yeah. you know you, you get to a level where like you you're making this your full-time job and then okay you gotta figure out a lot of things about business side like bookkeeping uh taxes all these different things Checks, yeah, i'm still like that's number this one point i'm still like you know, I feel like I'm still in the early phases of like learning, I guess, the ins and out of like actually running a business. The tax uh, code is what you got to learn first. Like if there's anything that I could pass on that I'm super sure about that I know you'll hear from a million people, learning the tax code is like as a business owner is like the number one thing you're going to want to do because you obviously know money comes in and out and it's just going everywhere. Like, it's just about like where you move it. And mm -hmm. you, I, I mean, I'm not trying to promote not paying taxes, but you know, you want to figure out a way yeah, yeah. to like I pay less, you stuff, know, when yeah. you're running a business, course, you know what I'm saying? The most successful people are already pay taxes. You know? Yeah, so I mean, cause you want to put that money towards the business yeah, though, you yeah. know, so, so, so it can create jobs and it can buy you the time that you need to, the, the time, which is the most important to me and the, the resources to expand you know you yeah, can't do exactly. that like when you, know, you don't have just like standard taxes correct you know mm -hmm. and that's your biggest worry so i'd say that that's been like a a big thing it's just like kind of becoming an adult like I, we're both yeah. young how old yeah. are you uh to turn 26 now, 26 like yeah i'm okay. 26 as well like I, and here's another thing i like that we were talking about in the last special of this that we did is like we're young like yeah. we're 26 years old and like learning taxes is like, uh, it's just a regular adult thing, you know? So I guess just like becoming an adult and realizing that this is something that people who work in entertainment do and people who aren't in entertainment or yeah. apparel or, you know, yeah. uh, in fashion, like it's just, 
soaking that in, it's like soaking life in and being a normal person, but also like just sticking to the the dream that you have and just making sure it comes out for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. I don't think I have anything else to say to you. <laughs> no more questions. No more questions. We can take right. pictures now after this. Though. All right. Do you guys have any questions we should touch no. on? We're all good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, this was good. This is different. Oh, yeah. I'll take that as a compliment for sure. Yeah. No. I always like when people do different <laughs> shit, you know? Yeah, I like this, man. We're good. We can cut. Yeah, I was waiting if you walked out of the frame or not. Oh, no, no. I was waiting on that moment.